Alrighty, folks. Let's get this show going, shall we? Let's get some music on. Let's do our thing. Alrighty. Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Voodoo Val, and I am going to be your host for yet another episode of Graphic Glow Up. And we have a pretty cool show uh, prepared for today. I am going to actually place in the title. I seem to always forget to do this, uh, but we are going to be doing some animation today. Um, and our title uh, for this show is Lava Lamp Luxury. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's a great title, honestly, and I'm, I'm very excited to kind of dive into um, what we have planned for the day. If you are over on the YouTube channel, please come over to Behance because that's where I'm going to be reading the chats. Um, hello, how's everyone doing? I see Sam and Becca and Gareth. What are you guys doing? Let me write in uh, luxury here. There we go. Boom. Done. Lava lamp luxury. Um, so for those of you who have never, uh, been into an episode of Graphic Glow Up, basically what we're going to be doing today, um, is utilizing all of, or some of Adobe's awesome research si resource sites to create a project. Um, and this is also kind of a, an opportunity for all of you folks to jump in, maybe create something new, learn something new, something you've never tried out before and learn how to appreciate your own work. Um, so we're going to be doing uh, some awards towards the end of the stream just to keep track of all the wonderful progress um, that we make during our art journeys, which I'm stoked about. It's one of my favorite parts of the show. Um, but first off, let's dive into Adobe Color today. We are going to be doing animation, like I said, but we need to choose some colors for our lava lamp project. I'm going to select some colors and then I'm going to kind of go over why I have chosen lava lamps for today's episode. All right. Um, so let's dive over. Let's go to color.adobe.com. Boom. Let me bring this over here and then I am going to switch over to our strim stram here there we go um so this is adobe color color.adobe.com um i really love this banner right here by the way i haven't seen this banner um yet and this is like really great art um maybe that will inspire a little bit of what we're going to be working on today maybe maybe um so uh, we're going to select some colors because we're going to be designing a lava lamp. We're going to be animating some cool lava in that lamp and we're going to need some colors to go with um, our lava. We're going to need to choose what color this lamp should be. Um, hello, RB. Welcome in, Bliss. It's good to see you. Bex. What's up, Bex? Um, if you folks want to suggest some colors, you can, but I'm going to kind of explore Adobe Color a little bit here and show you how I decide which colors I'm going to choose, um, if they work well together and all that good stuff. So um, up here at the top, uh, one thing that I do want to point out is I have I have so many libraries. I have tons and tons of libraries um, that I've been using over the years, um, but I wanted to make a library specifically for this episode. So this one is called GGU for graphic glow up ggu lava lamps um and i just made myself a new um a new library just in the browser in adobe color um, so i just clicked this button here you can enter a new library name and say create and then you can start adding colors and things um to that library and it will show up in photoshop immediately for you, which is really great. So if you ever get a hankering to just kind of jump in and grab some colors, um, or if you really need to grab something for a project, you can make the library on the fly, not have to worry about that. You can kind of organize as you go, which is really cool. Um, Bliss says, I'm planning to be doodling for my wind, my wind down time, just spreading the good news. I think that's excellent news. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll do some, some lava lamp stuff with us today. Um, so I, I have, you know, colors that pop up here, things that I've searched for before. Um, you can go into create and create your own, um, color palette here where you can just straight up, um, select colors. You can go through all of the different color harmonies, um, and all of that stuff. If you want to select colors that way, um, definitely a very cool, um, way to select colors. If you want to do it like from scratch, um, you can extract a theme, you can download um, or upload a image to, maybe I'll, maybe I'll try that. Maybe I will snag a, an image, maybe a piece of my art, um, 
and just throw something in. Let's grab, um, let's actually grab one of the images I made for this past sci-fi week. We'll do our Sith Wayfinder image. And if I just throw that in there, uh, it gives me a color palette. It will automatically select a cool color uh, palette for me, but I can also kind of drag things around and alter this too if I want to um, kind of edit this and make it a little more custom. Um, if I want to, which is very, very cool. So you can upload a photo if you have a photo and the color of that photo has a really nice um, vibe or atmosphere that you'd like to go to, go ahead and do that. Um, you can extract a gradient from an image so I can make myself a gradient um, if I'd like to do that, uh, which is good fun. I can kind of alter how this gradient um, works. We can select, reselect a, maybe a, um, a warmer color or something here. Um, that looks pretty nice and starts uh, extracting colors that way. And you can also come into accessibility. So if you are working on a particular uh, project, you need to make sure that the contrast between your colors uh, is readable um, and well suited. You can come in here and check out all that stuff. Um, you can go through trends, which is cool. So if you come through trends, you can see all of these trendy um, uh, pieces that other people have uploaded and made color palettes for. If you're doing an illustration, grab yourself an illustration color palette that somebody has um, set up. You can look through the library. So if somebody um, has created uh, or you, you have like your own libraries of color and stuff, you can come through and look through them. Um, but what we're gonna do today is go to Explore. Um, and I'm gonna use Explore because I really love the search options that I can do here. So if I want to just say lava lamps, because I'm gonna be uh, illustrating lava lamps and animating lava lamps today, um, I can find pictures of lava lamps and great color palettes for the lava if I want to. Um, now I have saved a couple of the images from the lava lamps uh, page here on Adobe Color, but I would like to actually search for some things that are not that are not lava lamps um, because we don't have to use a lava lamp color palette for this. Um, is this new or am I late? Arnold, we have just started. We're jumping through and using Adobe Color right now, picking some colors for our project today, um, but we have yet to dive into our illustration animation, so you are right on time, I think. Um, it's great to see you. Ricardo, hello, welcome in. Do, do, do. Let's see, groovy times, groovy gang. Yes, indeed, groovy, groovy. Um, <laughs> just making sure I haven't missed anything in the chat. Um, yes, FYI, Liquify is now available to the masses in Fresco. Yes, um, Annika, save your work. Welcome in, it's good to see you, girl. Um, I don't know why I've just visualized an animal crossing gyroid and lava lamp hybrid and now I want Val to make it a thing. We might just have to do that. That might be a lava lamp gyroid. Um, for those of you who don't know what a gyroid is, it is an adorable little mechanical creature with a cute little face um, that uh, twists around and makes strange noises in the video game Animal Crossing. So maybe that's what we're doing. Maybe that's what we're doing today. Um, so we've got lava. Uh, I am going to go ahead and what's something I could search for? Maybe um, uh, crystals, because I bet you crystals would give us some really great color combos that could be cool for, um, for a color palette for a lava lamp. Let's see. Um, this is really cool. This is, I like these blue colors with this orange. I might add that one to my library. Um, I think that one's pretty cool. And maybe we'll select one more, uh, for good measure. If I scroll through here and find something else. This is kind of neat. This doesn't really have like the descending colors that I want, um, but maybe I can make my own variations of those hues. So I'll go ahead and add that to library as well. And then we are going to jump into Photoshop. We're gonna jump into Photoshop. So let me, yeah, here we go. Let's pull this up. Um, so what we're gonna do today, why lava lamps? Why is that, even though that's such an odd thing to choose for one of these episodes, um, why are we doing lava lamps? Um, and why is it important? 
Um, so I wanted to do another animation challenge. Animation is not something we do very often for graphic glow up and I've been using the Photoshop timeline in a lot of ways on this show and in the daily creative challenges. Um, and we've been doing like video timeline things, but I don't think I've done um, a very in-depth tutorial of like frame by frame animation um, for graphic glow up and in a, in a while I've been using the video uh, timeline animation. Um, so I wanted to do that and I thought a very easy shape, a very easy frame by frame transition for all of you to kind of dip your toes in the water if it's not something you're used to would be the globs of lava in a lava lamp. So um, what we're going to do is this. Um, I, I'm going to end up painting a lava lamp or at least painting the shape of a lava lamp for our lava to hide in. Um, but you you folks have probably seen a lava lamp. If, if not, I'm gonna kind of uh, do a weird little sketch here just to show you what a lava lamp looks like um, for those of you who are unfamiliar. It typically looks a little something like this. It's like a, a little glass lamp and this glass lamp uh, has, I don't even know what the liquid is to be perfectly honest with you. I don't know, I don't know what lava lamp lava is at all. Um, but it's, it looks like this. There's some different designs. You can get some pretty cool designs for lava lamps. I own one in black and purple, obviously. Um, and it has these little, um, I guess you'd say like globes of, uh, lava kind of floating around in it, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, just these little, little pieces of stuff like this, um, kind of, kind of floating around in there. Um, and some of them are like little bitty pieces, uh, and some of them are much larger blobs, um, and things. And what we're going to do, um, is animate one of these. I am going to put some little tiny bits and bobs uh, kind of floating around in our lava lamp, um, but I want to animate one larger central glob um, in this area here, and we're going to do a frame by frame animation of it. And it's going to kind of start out uh, like so, and then we're going to have it push down um, and change its form until it's in a different shape. Um, and I, I feel like this is going to be pretty, pretty easy to do, um, once I show you how I like to kind of lay this out. So I'm going to group this together and I do have a couple of Martha Stewart pieces prepared for you today, um, because it is something that might be slightly time consuming to do all in an hour. Um, but I think you're going to like this. So, um, if we want to... Uh, is this, this doesn't have anything on it. Okay. If we want to create a frame by frame animation of a, um, a curvy circular glob moving up and down, and we want it to change its shape and form, um, how do we do that? We'd, you'd have to kind of visualize and try to understand how that material moves where it's going to go um, and do it in a very realistic way. And I realized that the figure eight shape actually is all of that. And I'll show you what I mean. So if we want a glob like this to move around, um, what we can do actually is uh, animate it along a figure eight path, but not in the way you might initially think. I'm actually gonna hide this here so I can just really get into it. Um, so if we draw a figure eight shape like this, we want a glob here to morph down into a glob below. And this figure eight shape can actually be our path, our track where we, uh, where we do that. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to turn this into a, maybe I'll, maybe I'll paint in like a purple, um, just so that we can see over top of this. Okay. Um, so if I start out with my glob, okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'll just paint back at that in. So we have a glob. Um, and then I will turn this on a lower opacity because I want to be able to see what my next frame is going to be. So imagine, let's turn this on a lower opacity as well. 
Imagine that this first glob, that's our first frame. That's our starting glob shape, okay? Now, next, what we can do um, is on a new layer, let's, uh, or uh, honestly, what we could do is just duplicate um, this glob because we know that we want to bring it down and change it. Um, that glob has to move down and then start to fan out into the other glob. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna transform this. I'm going to uh, bring it down and bring it in because as this slinks down, as this kind of does this motion, this portion up here is gonna have to shrink in as the form, the mass of it starts to fill in this area, okay? So we're gonna make it smaller up at the top here and we're gonna start to just pull this down. Now you could do this with the pen tool if you like. I'm gonna use my stylus because I really prefer to illustrate, but if you wanted to use your pen tool, you could do that as well. For example, if I hit P on my keyboard to access my pen tool, start a new layer, um, I could start doing that same thing. So maybe we do it here. Uh, I could make myself a glob, you know, start doing that. There's a little shape. Um, and then I could, you know, start creating my layers that way. Um, also, just a quick tip, if you want to be rounding your pen tool um, points here, all you have to do is instead of letting go, just click and hold and you can start to um, kind of round those shapes. And when I connected, I just dragged out a little bit more just so that I um, have that round shape. Uh, but I am gonna use the stylus because that's what's more comfortable for me. Um, so as you can see, I can start, let's, we can go ahead and duplicate this again. Um, that that one layer and let's I'm holding alt so that I can bring in from both sides and then I will shrink this down and place it here uh, so now I've made a smaller uh, piece and as you can see the op the opacity is lower on this so you can really see the difference between the layers there um, and I brought this in but that mass has to go somewhere so we're gonna push it out this way okay um, and we can start to do that over and over again um, until we've kind of created these frames of this piece of lava um, going from the upward position to the downward position. Now I've done a few of these frames um, already just because I didn't want to spend the entire episode going through all of these frames and frames and frames and frames. Um, so I'm gonna show you what I have prepared for you folks just so you can um, see what I've got going and we'll dissect those a little bit so we're not making them from scratch. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, group all of this and I will hide it. Um, so my first group that I have here, you can see I've done some lines um, and it's all according to that figure eight shape. You see how important like just uh, the number eight or figure eight can be for something like this. So if I come through and hide all of these, you can see that they sort of disappear um, into the uh, that final shape. And as I started to create those shapes, it starts to push. So to make that lava, the mass here shrinking means that mass underneath going into that new shape needs to increase. Remember that. Um, I've never had a lava, a lava lamp. Maybe I should get one now. They're very cool. They get very hot though when you plug them in. So keep that in mind. Um, okay, so as I, I kind of built these line shapes, um, you can see how it's it's kind of doing that, where I am going from, if, in fact, if I just hide these in the center here, you can see I went from an upper shape into a lower shape. Um, and it's just kind of squeezing, almost if you imagine, um, if I make a new layer here, you could imagine a little ring right here. And you wanna just push everything through that ring. That's kind of what we're simulating there, um, just with simple shapes. And I think that that will help your visualization to kind of do this. Um, if you think of it that way, uh, the shape that can be sort of adhered to a figure eight and you're just kind of pushing this blob through a ring um, uh, back and forth. 
if that makes sense. Um, and it is actually, as I said, I think a really good practice for frame by frame animation because it is something that um, doesn't actually take too much in order to draw. So another way that people like to practice frame by frame animation is to make a walk cycle or something uh, for a character. So if we wanted to do something like that, it's typically, you know, if we just do like a little stick, a little stick guy, um, and we give them a little leg. People will, you know, animate a walk cycle um, of the uh, character. Um, and it's just, it's a lot of moving parts, you know, it's a lot of moving parts to kind of go through and do a huge progression. But this shape is very, very simple. And I think that if you use the layer opacity, um, that figure eight, uh, and this little idea that it could be squeezing through this ring, you can really start to get a very nice shape. Um, another way that you can think about it that I feel is um, a, a pretty easy way to imagine it um, is if I, maybe I'll leave this little ring sketch here um, and I will hide all of these. Um, as you start to make your frames, uh, as you start to do this, let me make myself a new layer here. As you start to build your frames out, um, you literally could also kind of do it like this, where you just bring this end in and then push that out. And then the next one, bring this much in and then bring that out, you know? And you can just go through and kind of do that. And then you can keep a little ring shape there just to help you visualize and sooner or later you have this strange lava-esque shape that will work and we'll put that in our lava lamp um, but we've got to paint this we, we've chosen colors and we're gonna have to paint each of our frames um, and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna use my colors from my libraries and also I'm gonna show you a unique way which a lot of you guys have seen me do for like quick painting but we're gonna use this very specifically because we can render video and export GIF animations from Photoshop but there's some trickiness to be dealt with when it comes to sorting the colors um, and keeping your video and your GIF high quality so we're gonna talk about the export um, and rendering of the videos on that front um, so I have also after my little uh, line art there I have also filled the shapes in um, and we're gonna paint them real quick so uh, if I have I might go ahead and hide these um, so this is how we're going to paint things I'm sure some of you folks have seen me um, illustrate with my handy dandy uh, noise brush I'm gonna kind of detail to you why creating a custom how to create the custom noise noise brush for those of you who haven't seen um, but I'm going to show you why it's so unique and why it's not like having just a texture brush and why it works so well for exporting videos um, with Photoshop. So the first thing I did here is I've created my shapes um, and I have locked the transparency. So for those of you who have never worked with lock transparency before, lock transparency means that I've, you know, after I create something on my layer, um, if I lock the transparency, that means I cannot put any more, um, paint so to speak any more down on my canvas in a space where there is not already pixels on that layer so out here i can't paint at all uh, but there's already pixels here in the shape of my lava so if i paint here then it will go on it's almost like using a clipping mask which for example um, is if i create a new layer and I right click that and create clipping mask. I can put whatever I want on this layer. You can see that it'll start to fill up. Um, in fact, maybe it'd be better if I paint bucketed for this. Um, I can paint bucket this entire clipping mask here, um, but it will only adhere to what it's clipped to. So even though this entire layer is now red, um, it is only showing up within the space of my, um, my shape here. 
but I'm going to do lock transparency and I want to do lock transparency because um, I don't want to have clipping masks. I need these layers to end up being frames in the frame animation timeline. Um, and so I don't want to have to merge layers and do all that stuff. This is just kind of a quicker way to handle that. I've been really enjoying the noisy brush trick 10 out of 10. Ooh, I'm so excited. Um, I just started doing this, but with photos, illustrating frame by frame is quite the task, but so cool. Yeah, Arnold, it's one of my favorite things to do. It's very, very fun. Um, so let me get a, this is how I create my noisy brush. I'll do a quick tutorial of that. I grab a soft round pressure opacity, um, brush, which is just, it's a standard brush that all of you folks have, um, in Photoshop. Um, and I'm going to turn the brush mode to dissolve. So when I paint with it, you can see that it is like a, um, a nice, uh, crispy noise. And I was zoomed in very close here. Um, but I, I wanted to show you the detail. So, um, when I'm zoomed out, which we will actually, what we'll need to do, um, is let me back up just a little bit. What we will need to do, um, actually is make this much larger than we have it right now. Um, and I'm going to turn my lava lamp sketch back on, um, so that we can see it, um, in our lava lamp. Um, let's make this just slightly smaller like so. Um, when you paint with the lock or with the noise brush, it doesn't just give you like this nice grit. If you zoom in, it is painting with that uh, low opacity, like kind of a gradient soft brush. It's painting, but it's painting in 100% opacity, perfect pixels. It is not, there's no um, opacity or uh, I guess sliding scale of visibility for it. So what it does is it parses out all of these pixels to still, still simulate this idea that it is fading, um, from, you know, more color to less, but it is 100% in, uh, the 100% opacity. This is very important because when we create our GIF, um, illustration or GIF animation, um, Photoshop only allows you to export a GIF with a certain number of colors. And if you have tons of gradients um, and different opacities of colors that are mixing together, you will have tons and tons of different colors in your piece. If you use this brush where everything is actually 100% opacity um, and it's just got this nice uh, pixel gradient and you use a limited color palette, it means that no matter how many little gradient points you have and how stylized you get with that, you can literally ensure that your end product piece only has 10 colors or however many colors you want um, in that piece, which means that when you export your GIF, it will be perfect. It won't have to bust it down at all. It won't have to compress it. It won't have to make you choose between how many colors you want and it won't export it with weird lines and strangeness that doesn't appear in the original illustration that you've created in Photoshop. So very, very important. Um, but we are going to use our colors and we're going to, we're going to paint these bad boys up. Okay. Um, so I'm going to come into my libraries. I have all of the, you remember we went to Adobe color and I selected my colors that I wanted to try. Um, and they are all here. And I think what I might use actually is a collection of a lot of these. I feel like I kind of selected a lot of different color palettes that seem to have this reoccurring red and orange in it. So I'm going to use red and orange and then I might sample some colors from my other palettes. Um, and a quick tip about using the uh, color palettes uh, from Adobe Color in your libraries is that I can literally sample from this like a color palette. Um, so if I click this red color, I'm using this red color. If I click this blue color, I'm now using this blue color. Um, also just another point about that whole, um, 100% opacity bit. You can see when I zoom in here, um, it's, it's perfectly set out. So I have this cool gradient when I zoom out, that looks really neat. Um, but it's literally only three colors so I can keep the colors on lock. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, 
uh, these three orange uh, bits here. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to unhide all of these and I'm going to paint buckle, paint buckle, paint bucket in um, the color for all of these, like the base color. So I'm just going to go ahead and cycle through here. Um, actually, I want to make sure that all of the transparency, uh, the, the transparency is locked on all these layers so I don't um, go out of the lines. I want everything to be perfect. Um, so that transparency was not locked. There we go. Um, so I'm going to come through here and I'm going to make them all our base orange color. And then I'm going to illustrate in and make them kind of 3d, uh, and really put them in this space. So let's go down to our bottom one. This should be on the top. Let's go ahead and hide all of them so I can paint them one at a time. Um, okay. Grab my brush. I'm going to grab this mid-tone color here and I'm going to keep in mind that for a lava lamp, while a lot of the time um, I do illustrations or you might think to initially do illustrations or graphic pieces where the central light source is coming from um, the top down, a lava lamp has light um, at the bottom here. Um, so light is actually shining up towards our subject. Um, so I am going to actually light it from the bottom. So I'm just going to go like this. Um, I might do a tiny little uh, teensy bit of light up at the top here. Um, actually, I might, I might even grab this darkest color just to really give it, it kind of looks like a piece of amber, to be honest. Um, and then we'll grab our lightest color and I'm going to do a little swipe of our light color. And that's kind of all there is to it. We're just really kind of a really easy way to create um, the, like the illustration, the illusion of um, 3D. Like, you know, just bring that into a 3D space. So let's unhide the next one. There it is. Um, and let's do the same thing here. Let's grab our dark color. Oops, wanna make sure we're on the right, uh, the right layer there. Let's grab our dark color. Let's throw that in there. I'm gonna actually make sure I hide that one too, just so that I can uh, stay focused on this. Um, and I'm just kind of in uh, uh, ascending order, starting with my dark, going to the midtones. We'll grab this lighter color. Um, and as it starts to change into that little bottom part that's warping into our next, um, our next shape, I'm gonna try to light them differently. So this is its own little piece here, you know, and then this is its own little piece here as well. So just to kind of suggest that it's pulling into another shape, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, add just a little more dark. There we go. Starting to look pretty nifty, I think. Let's go ahead and hide that. Let's grab our other one. Uh, I'm gonna, I paint bucketed in this, uh, this medium color, but I'm gonna grab the darkest color and we're gonna use that for the base. Um, let's go ahead and paint this in and this right here will be kind of its own separate area. You see how we're kind of bringing that in. We might connect them a little bit just to show that it's pulling slightly. Um, and then we'll grab our lighter tone. Boom, there it is. And I feel like it's really starting to look like a piece of our strange lava um, and very simple shape. Also very simple painting technique, which you could do if you turned your smoothing on um, with your mouse, um, you could come in here and you could do all the painting I'm doing um, with a mouse, even if you do not, um, even if you do not uh, have a stylus. And I'll do the next one maybe with, uh, with a mouse. So um, let's go ahead and hide that one. Let's grab this one right here. Um, let's paint bucket in our dark as we do. Um, and I'm gonna grab this medium tone. Let's make my brush big. And I'm just gonna click with my, with my mouse. Um, and then I'll do the same thing here. We'll click here just to kind of bring this in here. So I'm kind of doing the same thing here, even though I'm not using my stylus. Kind of get a, a roundness there. We'll grab our midtone there and we'll kind of bring this in. I'm just tapping. 
Um, I think we could probably, if we got our smoothing, changed our smoothing up and made our brush much smaller. Um, it is, I, I suppose it doesn't, I don't have my pressure sensitivity, um, which is not, you know, as easy to do um, with the, with the mouse. Um, it's much easier to do when you can, um, like I'm painting off the edge here, so I have kind of a nicer smoothness to it. Um, a little harder to do on these shapes, but what you could do is kind of create this um, in reverse. So instead of starting with the dark, um, you could start with the light on that upper part and kind of go in and do it like that because it helps you fade it just a tad. Um, I will go back to using my stylus though because it's easier for me personally. Um, all right, there we go. Got our little mid-tone. Getting our little light up there at the top. I did want to add a tiny bit of light at the top of it because I feel like that would be pretty, pretty realistic. Um, and we can even go back to our, um, if I come back to here, we can even go back to lava lamps and you can kind of see what I mean um, here on these. Yeah, like this one is pretty, pretty good. This green one, you can see that it does have a little bit of light up at the top of those um, nodules of lava in there. Oh, here's a good one. There's one that's even using the same colors. You can see how it has like that um, lighter color at the bottom of the pieces because the light is shining up from the bottom. So that's kind of what I'm trying to create there. Um, you need a mosquito with dino blood. I was thinking that it looks like dinosaur amber and that would be really, really cool um, to kind of uh, insinuate. Um, that would be pretty neat. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll sketch a little mosquito in there. Um, I'm gonna hustle through these because I know that we are coming to, uh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna get too crunched on time. I do wanna make sure I paint all these in. Uh, and make it all look the way we want so that we can export our GIF. Um, and what I might do, because I don't know if we have the time to like paint an entire lava lamp design, like the whole lamp and, and detail it and make it look like a painting um, before the end of the stream, maybe we do like a really cool graphical idea where we actually have line art for the, uh, for the lava lamp. That could be kind of cool. Um, that's kind of a, an idea I was toying with earlier. Let's go ahead and dump this in there, grab our medium color, throw that in. Um, I'm gonna start blending um, into where it doesn't really look like it's separate parts shaded because we're kind of going back into that uh, singular shape again now. There we go. Um, and Last one, boom. Let's go ahead and paint bucket our dark color in. Um, and honestly, I can tell you, this is probably one of the, like, cause I've, I've painted like photorealistic stuff. I've painted like semi-realistic, uh, surreal stuff uh, before. I can honestly say, I think that recently, this is one of the most satisfying ways to paint simple shapes that I've ever done. It is. If you are not interested in painting lava lamps with me, but you're interested in finding a new way, um, even as a graphic artist, just to um, kind of bring some of the shapes that you're designing with into a 3D space, please try using the uh, this nifty little uh, noise brush that I have set up for you because it's super fun to use. It's very, very enjoyable. I'm going to add a tiny bit more light to the bottom of this just to make that a little bit more um, obvious. So now we have all of our different pieces of lava. We've created like all of these lava pieces. Um, and what we're going to do is we are going to animate this. We are. Um, so I am going to, what I might do first is uh, I want to, I would like to preview the animation um, and I'm going to do that by, I think I'm going to, I don't think we need any of these other groups and things that I have created. So I'm going to go ahead and delete everything that's in here. Um, I'm going to bring this down uh, and maybe, I don't think we need these right now. What I might do is I have another um, shape thing opened here. I'm just going to throw our lava lamp sketch over here in my other Photoshop file. 
um, and then I'm gonna delete everything in this file that I don't need because what I want to make sure I have is just our layers of our lava. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and ungroup this. Let's ungroup layers. I'm gonna go to window, timeline. Let me also peek at time. I think we're doing good. We got about 15 minutes. Um, I'm also going to flip myself over to the other side of my screen here. Um, okay, so we've got our Photoshop timeline open. Uh, and what I am going to do, I don't think you can see my entire timeline. Let me make sure you can see everything I've got going on here. There we go. So you can see the whole bottom of it. I just want to make sure that that's visible for you. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I have only the layers, the only layers in this file now are just our lava files, um, our lava layers. And I am going to, in my timeline, um, let me actually close this because it's opened. Let me close that. Um, window timeline. Okay. I think what's happening here is I need to... When you open your Photoshop timeline, it might ask you if you want to create a frame animation or a video animation. Um, and we are doing the frame animation. So make sure you click frame animation and then it'll make the first, um, like uh, just basically a preview of your entire canvas as the first frame. But you want to click this little hamburger menu and say make frames from layers. And then it'll make one frame for each layer that you have and it will hide and unhide them as you go through. So we can just preview this animation real quick. Ooh, hoo, hoo. so it goes down, right? Because we've animated it from one position to the next position. So you can see how with that texture and with all those colors, it looks like almost like gold liquid kind of dropping, right? But we need it to go back the other way because what we want is for the lava and the lava lamp to go down and then up into the other shape and then down and like that. So all we have to do in order to achieve that um, is just to duplicate these layers and reorder them. So I'm going to go ahead and control Z just to back up because we're not going to use that just yet. Um, and I'm going to flip myself over to the left side of my, uh, monitor here so you can see my layers panel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to like this, uh, layer seven here is our starting layer. Um, I am going to actually duplicate one through six. So I'm selecting them holding shift uh, and then clicking the top and bottom most uh, layers that I'd like to select. Control J or Command J if you're using a Mac to duplicate them. And I'm gonna drag them above layer seven. So now you can see if I scroll through here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I want to reorder this so it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, okay? Um, so I'm just going to grab this and I'm going to reorder it as such, because what that means is that now I have a new starting position that starts from one direction and goes down and then reverses itself again. And once I have a there, back and again uh, orientation of my um, my layers, then suddenly it'll loop over and over again and it'll just look like it's going up and down and up and down. Okay. So let's go ahead. I'm going to just preview real quick. We have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven into six, five, four, three, two, one. And now let's go ahead over here and say make frames from layers again. And now we have, you can see on our timeline, if I swap myself to the other side of the camera, you can see the preview for all of our layers will show you if you got this right. Okay, so we have our first layer showing a, our little glob. And then as you can see, it goes down. You can see the preview into the central uh, piece here. And then it goes all the way back up. You can kind of see that preview. And that means we've got it pretty right. If you start to see things that don't really look like it's going down, you might have some organization issues with your layers. So just check that. Um, and then we're gonna press play. Let's see. Yo, look at that. Isn't that so cool? So now we have like this detailed image of our lava going up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. 
Won't it be displayed twice at the loop point? It's possible. It's yes. So um, I have layer one twice, but I don't think it's so bad if the very uh, starting point is looped because that just means it holds. See how it, it just holds a little bit long at that uh, a lo longer at that top point, which is fine for me because that means it goes up and it stops and up and you know, which is fine. But we could we could duplicate or uh, delete one of those duplications and it would be just fine. Um, so now we have this thing that just looks so cool. Um, very cool. Almost looks like a claymation. So yeah, it does kind of look like claymation. How are we doing on time? I think I got about 10 minutes left. Um, and I think we're going to design all the way to the end of the episode, actually, instead of doing the award ceremony. I've decided that we will, at the end of each month for Graphic Glow Up, we will review all of the projects we've worked on for Graphic Glow Up and award points at the end of the month so that we have more time to work during the episodes. Um, so we have this super awesome, super cool. Um, and what I want to do now is I'm not working with the timeline on anymore. I, I control Z just to go back before I created a frame animation. And the reason why I did that is because we have to put a background in now. And with the frame animation, it's not like video timeline. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. It is not like the video timeline animation where you can have a central background and you can be animating things on top of that background on their own. The frame animation means that every single layer is being hidden and unhidden in quick succession. Um, and so if I want a background with the lava lamp for this cool animation, that means every single one of these layers must have that lava lamp design on it. Because when if I just have a layer at the very bottom that has my lava lamp design, that means that uh, all of the layers, the frames are going to be cycled through and the only one that's going to show that that background is the bottom layer. So every layer, every frame of this animation must have all the background elements. Um, so we are going to create that. Um, so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab my lava lamp sketch that I had before. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab this and drag this over here and throw this back in here. Uh, and I'm going to put this on the bottom and we are going to create ourselves a nifty little background. Um, and then we are going to duplicate it uh, as many times as we need and merge it with our, uh, our little frames of our lava uh, and then create our animation. So um, let me go ahead. I'm going to group these for now just so it's not cluttering my layers and I'm going to call this lava. Boom. Um, I'm going to make us a background. So I'm just going to open my library here and we'll select a color. I kind of like this dark purple for it. Uh, I'm sure nobody is surprised that I would choose purple. Um, and let me make sure that our little sketch is there so we can see it. I'm going to kind of extend. I think that's cute. I think it's, I think that works. Um, it's inside. It's not going to break the borders. Maybe I'll make the lava lamp a little larger though. Like so. Um, and then maybe we'll move our lava to like the middle here. Um, okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make our lava lamp um, line art. I think that's the way to go for this uh, because I don't want to spend so much time trying to paint this lava lamp that it's uh, too time consuming. So I will make a new layer um, and I am going to just with, I think I'll use the polygonal lasso tool for this. I am going to make myself a selection um, and we're going to do like maybe a hard surface uh, low poly lava lamp um, because it would be very easy to do so um, and it won't take too terribly much time. Uh, we're just going to make ourselves a cool little lava lamp design. It's going to be a little bit uh, asymmetrical, which I think would be kind of interesting actually. So we've got that. Did that just, there we go. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint bucket just a random shape in here. Um, and I'm going to control D to deselect. So I've got the shape of that lava lamp. And all I'm gonna do is double click on my layers. Let me bump myself to the other side of the screen here. I double click that layer and I'm gonna add a stroke 
to this layer and I'm gonna make it maybe this gold color maybe the well maybe the yellow maybe we'll do the yellow um, I'm gonna grab that gold color and I'm gonna make that stroke larger I don't know if I like that maybe it needs to be more goldy yeah there we go um, okay and I'm just going to turn the fill down on it so then I it's it's clear it's see-through it's still the shape I wanted um, but it is not uh, losing us our shape how are we doing on time we got a couple of minutes uh, I don't think we have as much time as I wanted to be able to do it but I think that this works I think the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab my brush um, and I'm gonna go ahead and sketch the remaining pieces that we need in in our last few moments here um, just so that we can kind of see it all come together because I'm, I'm I feel like I'm a, a faster illustrator than graphic designer so we'll throw this in here we're just gonna go ahead and go like so so we have our lava lamp I'm gonna go like this and we're gonna do some cool little design bits here go ahead and get that in there boom we'll do this on the edge here just to get that in and for the background of our lava lamp we're gonna put in some little tiny pieces of the lava um, and then we will turn our design on um, in fact maybe we will just with a clipping mask clipping mask we'll grab a brighter color grab our dissolve and I'm just gonna can I do that oh it's got our fill turned down let's turn our fill back on um, there we go oops all right turn our fill back on and I'll erase this and then I want to see what all of this looks like together so um, we have to merge there's our E there's our background merge it all together let's ungroup our lava I'm hustling, I'm hustling, ungroup layers. How many minutes do we have? We have about three minutes. So let's see if we can do this in three minutes. So remember I said that all of our layers um, have to have um, a background on them. So I just duplicated a bunch of our backgrounds and I'm going to just drag this and click control to deselect um, a layer. And we're gonna leave a layer behind under each of our frames um, and I'll show you once I kind of back out here you'll start to see um, what I have done is I'm clicking control we're gonna leave that layer behind click control leave that layer behind um, and I think I just need a couple more there we go there we go and you can see I just dropped in a background layer between each and every one and we are going to merge I'm just selecting these and merging them together how are we doing on time let me peek are we gonna be able to do this I think we got like a minute and a half left I am rushing um, before I go though I do want to make sure that I let you guys know uh, that I'm so glad that you are out here um, hanging out with me. I hope that you have enjoyed this uh, super exciting, albeit rushed at the end, um, tutorial on uh, creating a lava lamp. We've got our lava lamp sketches in here. We've got our lava in there now. So they've all been merged. So now you can see in my layers, I've got all the lava um, merged in there. And if I go back to timeline, let's preview this timeline, make frames from layers and hit play. Boom, there it is. I hope you've all enjoyed this. This is so much fun and I don't want to get cut off, so I gotta go. Um, but thank you so much for watching me create this lava lamp. I hope you try frame animation in Photoshop for yourself. This was a blast. I have to take off, but we will have another episode um, of Graphic Glow before the end of the month, which I hope you will tune in for. For now though, I have to take off. Adios everyone.